Good day. My name is uh, Jula Joja. I am a senior astronomer at CERO. And today I would like to give you a few tips how to write a successful proposal for Meerkat observations. Um, first, I want to give you an overview about why we actually need proposals, but then to then go over to um, discuss the components of a proposal, because proposal is usually uh, not different for, um, from telescope to telescope, to finally have a look at the specifics of the Meerkat telescope or Mer a Meerkat um, proposal that you need to take into uh, account. Do not take any, everything for granted here, so things might change slightly and you might to need to adjust your proposal to your actual needs. So I'm, I'm with this presentation, I'll just try to give you some guidelines. Okay, let's start. Telescopes today are big things, very big things. So we have 64 telescopes uh, of uh, this kind here at the Karoo and uh, they all need to be financed and there are many, many stakeholders. If I would own this telescope myself, I would just do whatever I like. I would uh, observe a signal from an alien whenever my mind takes me there, I would observe a galaxy or a supernova explosion whenever I like. But this is not the reality. The reality is that these uh, instruments are very, very expensive. And uh, today, not only financed by even um, a state or a country, but in some cases, they need to be financed by a consortium of uh, countries even. This is the case with the SKA and even Meerkat has stakeholders which are not South Africans because some parts of the instrument are delivered by different countries. So this gives the need to establish a telescope program. And the telescope time should be optimally used, um, which is not that easy because optimal is a relative term. So you might decide to do the best possible science. But what is the best possible science? It's also a fashionable thing. So is the best possible science searching for aliens, which is probably uh, in the public mind uh, one of the most important topics for an astronomer? Or is it um, studying galaxy evolution? Is it studying general relativity? So best possible science might differ. Um, so we might also take care for a little bit of scientific diversity since we do not only want to do one thing with our telescope if the telescope has the possibility to do other things as well. Several countries or a country invests in your, uh, in your instrument they, so they want to have proofs that you are actually producing science with that uh, instrument and usually the proof how to um, that, that, you're, that you're doing good science is the number of papers and also the impact of papers. So that might be another criterion that you want to optimize for your telescope. Then there is human capital development. You have a country investing in your instrument. Then you want or that country usually has an interest that you raise the young scientists to actual being full professionals from that country, in that country, and uh, maybe become uh, or spread out, go somewhere else. So human capital development is a very important component of, a of the usage of a telescope. So you, you need to take that into account when you create your telescope program. Then, of course, the promotion of national scientific interests. So if all scientists in your country have interest in only in supernova. Then maybe you do not want to spend all your time in searching for aliens. That means that uh, you have to take these national interests also into account and people will, or the people from your institutions will tell you what that might 
mean? Then, of course, finally, you have to take into account that you need to have a fair share among your stakeholders. So, uh, one country uh, so, uh, gives you a million, whatever currency, dollars. Uh, the other country, a hundred million dollars. So there must be some kind of balance in what these countries get back in terms of share for their scientists uh, in terms of tele telescope time. So the telescope operator, the entity that owns, formally owns the telescope and operates it, needs to decide about the optimal usage of the te that telescope, which means that, you, that he or she or that entity will define a telescope pro pro program. The time will be shared between different instruments. You have instruments, uh, for, for example, receivers, different wavelengths that you can observe uh, with your instrument. You will have larger and smaller projects, so there must be a balance between those two. Uh, long-term and short-term projects, it's not the same. Um, and of course, there must be uh, uh, some provision for spontaneous observations. So uh, some, inst some uh, signal gets to Earth from an alien civilization, then you want to be uh, able to actually point your telescope to where that signal comes from. Um, so the telescope operator will make a plan of how to divide the time and he or she is usually overseen by a board of stakeholders or peers. So the telescope operator cannot do whatever they want. Uh, in the ideal case, there will be a board of people who, te who check, independent people who check what, what they are doing to, uh, to correct uh, in, the, in, in the future, if possible. So what happens is that the telescope operator establishes a time allocation process uh, in which uh, all these um, considerations are reflected. But in, in reality, this time allocation process is very similar from telescope to, teles to telescope. So what I will tell you here is not only valid for Meerkat, it will also be valid for the square kilometer array or other facilities. What usually happens is that you get a call for proposals. So telescope operator issues a call and asks for input of, um, of proposals to the, um, to the facility. Those will then be collected and undergo an assessment by reviewers, specialists, and uh, a technical and a scientific review. Then it will be ranked and the time, uh, time will be allocated to those projects, proposed projects, by a time allocation committee, which may be the same as the reviewers, but in some cases, as it is the case for Meerkat, uh, will be a different committee. Then, it, this proposed ranking will be checked and approved by the telescope operator. And this is the thing, telescope operator has the last word. The telescope operator is controlled by uh, a board, but basically he owns the place, he decides or she decides what is being observed. It's not the time allocation committee even though it's very unusual if whatever the time allocation committee decides is not observed by an, by an observatory. So then the observations are carried out by the telescope operator uh, consulting the scientist. So as I said, these rules can be broken by the telescope operator if there is an actual call from the aliens and say, I point your telescope there it would be silly not to do that because of the rules that, that you've been laid down. So there are different types of projects. 
open time projects are usually the small projects, so smallish projects that can be also be larger, um, but sizable, so they can be done, they can be done in a, um, in a certain amount of time, let's say a year. Um, and they will be um, ranked in a competitive process, like I described just before. There are large survey projects. Mercat is very heavy on those uh, large survey projects, which are or can be defined over several years and will also be ass assessed in a competitive process, which is much harsher than the, the, the usual small open time project that you will have, obviously. Then there is um, there are um, is a special type of um, project which needs to be assessed very quickly, urgent projects. Well, I mean, if the if the alien comes and calls you, then it's probably even the telescope op the telescope operator, so the person sitting there steering the telescope, who will respond as quickly as possible to point to that alien. Uh, but there are other um, very urgent um, projects that can be uh, um, proposed, which require a much shorter response time. So this is the so-called dis director, director's discretionary time that will then be allocated to that project. They, those proposals are much less formal and they can be assessed uh, much quicker uh, at the discretion of the, the director, so to say. Finally, there are stakeholder projects which are completely out of the, uh, the revenue process. So assume that there is a, um, a country or an entity um, investing a lot of money into your instrument and says, okay, I want to have observation time for that. It improves your instrument by a lot, so you say yes. But this time cannot be touched by you and cannot be uh, part of a competitive pro uh, pro process. Um, stakeholder projects can also be projects of your own institute. Uh, it's very unusual, but if in the course of commissioning and of, uh, of an instrument, there is idle time, you can use that idle time for verifying, uh, for verification purposes. So a proposal is usually very similar amongst uh, other proposals. So proposals are, have an established form and these are uh, similar from proposal to proposal. The first thing you need to provide is of course the information about who proposes. So what you need is the information about the authors. You will uh, define or you will select one author to be the principal investigator, that is the contact person for that project uh, that if it, if it gets selected or if there are questions about the proposal. There are names and the affiliations of the co-investigators. So that might be a group of people who want to conduct this project with different tasks for each and every person in that. Um, then, very important, you are submitting a hundred, I mean, there are a hundred proposals uh, for observing time. So the program committee will need something to remember your proposal by. So what you will submit is a short abstract and a name describing the project. The basic body is a also brief scientific justification. So usually what you have is three or four pages, sometimes even two pages to describe your project. You will need a technical description and a just technical justification um, that will describe um, whether your project is actually feasible. So you have this instrument, you want to reach this scientific goal. Is it possible to, to reach that goal with the instrument and what time do you actually need? That you need to discuss and uh, and um, and prove in your proposal uh, whether it's it's possible. Finally, with the with the telescopes as they are today, the data search 
is big and big. So you get terabytes of data out of your instrument and you want to analyze terabytes of data. Do you have to actually the needs, the, the means to do that? So do you have the computers? And can you, can you actually conduct your experiment? Also that you have to prove in more and more proposals. Finally, there are other aspects like uh, the affiliation of investigators or even the nationality. So usually it is the, um, the, um, the institute affiliation that plays the biggest role there. So what is, what is the affiliation of, of the investigators? Because if country one or institute one invests uh, a million, Institute 2 invests uh, 100 million, then this affiliation might play a role in who gets a little bit more weight uh, in being successful with the proposal. Um, countries have an interest in uh, evolving or developing a, a student from their country, so the human capital development plays a big role. And finally, one important part is the past projects where you can prove, can show, or discussing how far you got with past projects of the instrument, where you can show that you're actually able to conduct a project like you're suggesting. What is necessary to write a proposal? And again, this is nothing special about Meerkat. First hand, this is, this is actually valid for any telescope that you, that you want to uh, um, get time from. One remark is that usually more observing time is asked for than available. That means that you are in a competitive situation. You have an oversubscription of a certain factor and the program committee will select uh, projects and give time away to, to projects and it, it has to deselect other projects. So you are in a competitive sit situation, which means that proposals, your proposal should not have obvious weaknesses. Be good in writing a proposal. So what to do, how to do it? Of course, you need to define a suitable, suitable project. Usually it's best if you have an original project. So this is the new thing that I want to uh, observe, new type of supernova that's observed in the optical. I want, to, uh, I want to characterize what the radio light curve is of that supernova. That's new and it's a, it's a very simple thing. It can be a verification or um, of, of former observations. I have, I have, I had a hint of this this cloud that that I have observed. Uh, I want to know how it looks like now, or whether it it, it really looks like these author have de authors have described. It might be part of a bigger a PhD project or a new project, a standalone project that you define. And then you have to check if the project is actually feasible. Do that early because you do not want to write a, write a proposal and then find out, I, actually I cannot do it because I'm, I'm asking for too much. One thing to consider is the position of the source on the sky. For Meerkat, you should not go above 40 degrees in declination. Um, a second one obviously is the sensitivity. So how much how much observation time do you need? Finally, you need to check the following. Your source, you might, might have it much easier than you think because your source has already been observed. So check if the data are already available in the archive because someone else has done the work for you and observed that source. Now let's come to the uh, the single um, parts of the proposal, the science case. One tip here is be as concise and simple as possible. The winning proposal has one, one objective, one scientific objective. It can be described in a few words. And um, 
that wins that wins um, usually a proposal or a, pro a competitive process. It is not always possible. So if you're asking for a lot of time, for example, you want to do a survey, you want to do actually a, a statistical survey of a diff uh, of a certain object on the sky, you cannot do that because you're asking for too much time for having only one case. Then you then you cannot do it. But of course, again, as simple and concise as possible. That 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 is that is. Um, that is the um, rule that you should follow if you're writing a proposal. Rather, do not discuss anything, anything side. That, what else can I do with, uh, with, uh, with these data? Maybe one or two sentences about that, but not much. It, of course, it must be compelling. You must be convinced of your uh, science case, and you have to uh, show that there is a lot of scientific merit in the proposal. So why is the proposal compelling? The other ancillary data that you want to combine your observations with, and that can be a very, very big advantage. So if you, if you know that famous telescope, you, I have already gotten time from that famous oh, space telescope, which is very hard, then it might be a motivation for the program committee to say, okay, uh, he's, she's been become gotten that far. So we will give time in order to complete the project. Of course, the possible outcomes of the experiment have to, has, have to be discussed. So what happens if I observe what I expect? What happens or what, what is the conclusion if I do not observe what I expect? Maybe this the one or the other might be much more exciting than uh, then, uh, or one might be more exciting than the other, but still you have to d discuss what happens if you do not observe what, uh, what you expect. The technical justification is a very important part. So you have defined your science. If you define your science, you can uh, define figures of merit and the target quantities that will enable you to conduct your science. So what are those? Sensitivity, of course. So how sensitive do, do I need to be to um, observe the phenomenon that I, I want to observe? There is the dynamical range. So are there strong sources which basically distort your imaging quality if you make images? What is the resolution? So how, how sharp need, do I need to be with a telescope and that is correlated with uh, um, um, instrumentation and also um, observing time for some instruments, especially Merkab. The longer you observe, the sharper you can get in resolution. And then once you have to, once you have defined these target quantities, you have to show under which conditions these are reached. So how much observing time do I need? What is the integration time? So the, basically the, the duration of one single shot uh, with your telescope. How much time do I need to calibrate, to gauge your, your uh, actual observation? What, is, what are other overheads? So slow time is, is one, one of the, the uh, overheads, overhead time that, that you need to take into account. Luckily, and especially for America, there are observatory tools to support these predictions. Sometimes these are even requested um, to, to be used. Finally, of course, you need to avoid RFI. In the optical, you cannot observe during the day or if somebody uh, switches on a light. If you know at this time somebody switches on a light over there, you point your telescope there. For Meerkat, it's the uh, radio frequency interference. Uh, you have to know uh, how to avoid the radio frequency in interference. Usually you cannot do much about it if, if, if it's satellites or uh, airplanes that, that, that interfere with your observations. Um, you can chase away all, all people with mobile phones, more or less, but some things you cannot do much about. So you need to know which frequencies to observe at. 
is your object compatible com, com, or your science case compatible with that? Then finally, the time request should precisely match these requirements. So I'm asking for this much time because I have, I need to use the, uh, reach this sensitivity. The calculator gives me this integration time. Do a bit of rounding there. And one warning, an error in the technical justification is the best way to downgrade or to deselect your proposal. If you make a mistake here, again, you're in a competitive situation. So the program committee will rather tend to deselect than to select um, projects. Um, so do not make a mistake here because this is the opportunity for the program committee to do that. To do, to do that. Um, the analysis, as I already said, um, you have to describe the analysis process. So for example, data reduction. So you first need to reduce the data, produce images from your observation. Do you have the computing or what kind of computing power do you need? What software do you use? Then there's the, the data analysis. For sake of argument, you're, let's leave out the, the supernova this time. Um, you want to, want to do a rotation curve. Huh? Rotation curve, the, measure the rotation speed of a spinning uh, galaxy. Um, which software do you use it and do you have the computational uh, requirements to do that? These need to be dis discussed. So how do you retrieve the data? Do you have a fast enough internet connection? Do you need tapes? Do you need, how, how do you transport the data? Uh, do you have the computing resources? Usually for these facilities, you need a very good computer. Finally, do you have people doing that stuff? Yeah. Do, do, do you have someone who knows how to reduce the data? Did someone teach you already how to use, use the data? Actually, you will, uh, you will attend a course to be able to do so. So yeah, I can do it after, uh, after taking this course. Um, Gladly, there are observatory tools to support your predictions. So uh, in, 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 in the case of Mercat, you will uh, probably have some tools or some numbers that you can use to uh, support your predictions. And then, of course, you have to show that the requirements are met. I can do the, 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 the analysis. Final consider considerations. If you have the the choice between several principal investigators, you choose the one that is, uh, that, that you might want to choose the one that gives you the best advantage in getting time. So if one of the stakeholders is a country X and uh, that country X gets 50% of the time or something, sometimes there are rules like that, not for America, but Sometimes there are rules like that. And the other co-investigators from a country that gets only 10%, it's probably clear which, which PI you would choose, even if internally you will distribute your, uh, the, 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 the responsibilities differently. Abstract, uh, do it as brief as possible and try again to convince and highlight the impact of the, pro, uh, um, the, the, the program committee and highlight the impact of the project. Um, highlight your uh, human capital development advantages. I have students from this country, if this is asked for, and discuss equity aspects, even if, uh, if this is asked for. Finally, you have the, as I said, you have the, the possibility to discuss the status of former projects. This gives you the opportunity to prove that you are capable, uh, capable of publishing scientific results with the instruments to, to really conduct the project. So enough about these general remarks. So this is about Mercat. If I talk about Mercat, this is an instrument in the Karoom. 
has 64 antennas and several uh, operates in the radio regime, has several bands and uh, with, 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 with which uh, can be um, chunked into different uh, 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 channels of, of, a, uh, of a certain width with uh, enable you to do a spectroscopy of, for example, uh, neutral hydrogen as wideband and narrowband modes. This will all be laid out and is actually in the best of its kind currently. So that will enable you to, um, to do great stuff. And that's the, um, uh, that's the instrument that we're talking about. Now the specifics, I have had talked about general, um, the general distribution um, or generally how projects are distributed. Uh, specifics of Mercat are, are as follows. It's very heavy on large survey projects. So very pro uh, prominent. There are eight large survey projects, which, which is very, uh, uh, which is a lot. Originally, before Mercat was upgraded, taking all the time of the telescope, but still occupying a large chunk of the of the time. So this is time gone for uh, for your small proposals. Then there is um, director's discretionary time. It's about five percent of all Mercat time. A little, some, somewhat in the in the um, in the range of uh, tens of projects so far. Then there is non-competed telescope time, which formally I call stakeholder pro projects, which are six plus one large surveys. Not you, unless you get you want to get access to the data and talk to the people conducting those or which have conducted or are in control of those surveys. You cannot you cannot have access to those. Finally, there are the open time projects, which are can be regular or larger. There was no call for a large project so far. There were two calls so far, and the last one awarded a thousand hours. This results in a special situation. First, you have the best telescope of its kind. Second, a lot of time is already taken away. So the oversubscription is uh, 3.4 for American. Tough competition. Uh, so you need to be very, very good in writing your proposal. But before you, before you stop and say, oh, I'll never man manage it, you will. Yeah. Try it. <laughs> it's the, the, the worst you, that can happen is that you won't get the time and you have learned a lot. So the how to get Mercat data is laid out in the Mercat telescope and data access guidelines. Uh, all those links will be provided to you uh, either in this, uh, in this presentation or um, when you access this presentation online. There's the Mercat archive, as I discussed. Um, you will maybe want to access existing data first before you, before you actually take the effort to write your own proposal. It includes quality assessment data, so you do not need to try it out yourself, how good the data are, whether they are um, suitable for your project. Even pipeline processed imaging data that can uh, serve to give you a first impression of the quality of the data or even to do science. Um, it contains commissioning data, so that data taken at a time where the telescope was not fully operational, so they can uh, be faulty a bit, but also open time data. There is a proprietary period. If you win a proposal, you have 12 months after the last observation that you have, that you keep the data for yourself. Um, for regular projects and three months it is for uh, director's discretion and time projects. With the other projects, other data, you need to contact the PIs or CERO itself. They will help you uh, in, on, on your way um, to access these data if, if, if possible. 
finally, the way to get Meerkat data is to write a successful proposal. Meerkat archive, uh, there is a description. Uh, you have a, a search tool uh, that you can have a look at um, where you can give a position on the sky and search for observations nearby. And an archive access tool um, that where you can give or specify a project um, identification number and that will then spit out the observations for you and inform you if these are actually available to the public to you if you are looking at the or if you want to have a look at the data um, now let's discuss the latest latest call for open time proposals it was issued in first on 1st july 2020 and is now closed so you um, um, you cannot you cannot submit any proposals uh, anymore and a lot of information uh, was associated to that call of proposals and you can access that and some will change but a lot of things can be expected to be very similar to what has been laid out then in any case please always read the instructions before you submit a proposal that's very important you do not want to make a little mistake uh, be because uh, some things you did some things a little bit different than was requested and your proposal gets deselected because of that so read it well and follow the rules that are laid out there the objective is was to maximize the scientific impact and i cite here of the telescope while contributing to south african scientific leadership and human capital development there you have it so you get a little advantage if you uh, if you're able to show that you um, advance a south african science, science leadership you have a south african student but despite that, it was an international call, so anybody could submit. And uh, it had a double blind review, which is um, is a new, maybe not new, but uh, but 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 a newish thing where you do not know who will review your proposal. Neither do the reviewers know who you are. It's considered fairer. Um, and only imaging pros projects were allowed. In L band with 100 hours maximally in 4K mode, that is a very coarse um, um, spectroscopic mode, um, and 50 hours maximally in uh, 32K mode, that would enable you to uh, uh, detail the kinematics, for example, of uh, neutral hydrogen in galaxies. Um, there was L-band and UHF-band observations that were allowed. So the details you can always read up in the uh, Mercat call. This will certainly be different in the new call. Um, so the components were, I have discussed this before, but just to, just to, to repeat what you needed to provide for a Mercat call, for a Mercat proposal, in a cover sheet, the authorship, authorship with a principal investigator, co-investigator, and a technical lead. Indeed, a person who is responsible to technically uh, make sure that the, uh, the project works. You needed to provide a title and an abstract of your, of your scientific proposal. You selected a category to ease the, the review process. Um, specify targets, the observing band, the correlator setup, so which kind of spectroscopy you wanted to do, and of course the observing time. Then there were a few other details you want to observe in daytime, is this a target of opportunity um, a proposal or not. The science case was allowed four numbered page pages and it incorporated already the technical justification. So you had four pages to lay out your science case and the context, the outcome, and uh, prove that this is technically possible with that instrument. You had to submit a data analysis plan, as I already mentioned. So you have the computational uh, power or not. 
and uh, the output of Mercat provided um, the output of provided sensitivity calculators. Uh, status of previous observations and human capital de uh, development details. If you were able to involve a, a South African student, your proposal got a little bit of a little plus. A longer proprietary period for students in general. So, uh, a few specifics about the tools provided by the uh, observatory. So there is a continuum sensitivity calculator, which means if you have a continuum, uh, um, um, a continuum um, project, while well, looking at the light curve of a supernova, is a typical. Um, then you could uh, you you have a you have a tool to determine uh, which observing time is needed for your, um, for your uh, 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 project to reach the sensitivity that you want. Um, take into account also the dynamic range. How to do that, you will learn um, in, in, your, um, in, the, in, in, in any course that you will take or your supervisor will tell you. Um, you have to uh, take into account the resolution. So which resolution do, do I want to reach? What is possible uh, with uh, uh, Nearcut? That is not so hard. Um, then what you need to make your calculations was the uh, system equivalent flux density that you could get from the technical description. So it's about 420 uh, Jansky. It's a measure of uh, taking out the observing time, how sensitive your telescope actually is. So knowing that, knowing the, the, the time, observing time, you can calculate your sensitivity. You can look it up. In terms of line observations, there were sensitivity calculators or there are sensitivity calculators which help you to determine your actual column density, so the, the number of atoms along a sideline, which is in many cases the quantity that is relevant uh, for, uh, for your science. Um, depending on the resolution that you are, uh, the, the spatial resolution that you want to achieve with your um, telescope. Finally, there was even an H1, or there is even an H1 mosaicing calculator, which allows you to automatically uh, generate a mosaic uh, across a large field, should it be needed. The final component that I want to discuss uh, is the test observing run because that was an integral part of the instructions that is indeed important because it gives you um, an estimate of the actual observing time that you need to reach your, your goals. So you start uh, with the OPT, observing planning tool, light version uh, it is called, and you define an actual observing block that means you can um, enter um, sources into well, into an, a block that, that will repeatedly be observed, or once. This is how it looks like. You can select a target. For that target, you select an integration time, and that integration time should sum up to match, the finally, the sensitivity that, that you want to reach. Once you have done that, you need to define calibrators. Calibrators should be observed uh, two minutes for two minutes as a general rule. Two minutes every 40 minutes. So you sort them all. Then you have uh, to observe a primary calibrator, which has a slightly different um, um, purpose. You will all learn this. Uh, then the, uh, the secondary calibrator, the uh, phase calibrator. Um, and if you want, uh, um, um, a polarization calibrator. So this defines an observation. 
then you uh, you can check or you define your observing time in your simulation you run it and finally what this observation planning tool will spit out is your observing time and that should not be larger than what you're proposing for so check it and that was a mistake that people made in the last uh, observing call i think this was a lot in a lot of information let me just summarize it so observing proposals are an integral part of telescope planning i argued uh, for this a lot so there are stakeholders they want to have maximum outcome what this outcome is is a little bit as is a matter of definition in most cases the selection process will be competitive so you are in a competitive situation proposals are all similar they have a title abstract scientific justification technical justification and feasibility study if you want and some other components but usually very similar and the best proposal has one objective and a very clear scientific aim it's not always possible but keep in mind the the the, the less the better same rule in music by the way read the call for proposals there might be traps there if you if you overlook them and of course check the archive there might be a, the surprise somebody has observed or has gone through the effort for you and you can just analyze the data um, and Mercat has several tools they will change um, to ease the process uh, for observing or for writing a writing a proposal and estimating the needs that you have to reach your scientific goal that leaves me with wishing you good success with your proposal um, and i hope this uh, little um, little collection of tips and background information has helped you